Welcome to the special edition of Voices from the Valley. I'm Shireen Bhan. My guest today is a serial entrepreneur. He decided to make the valley his home over four decades ago, and he's been part of the chip and microprocessing industry and has really watched it change, evolve, and grow. Today, he's betting big, not just on AI, but specifically on the digital story that India is hoping to ride on. Joining me today to talk about his previous ventures and of course his vision for the future is Raju Vegesna. Thanks very much for joining Thank us you. and what a wonderful view we have here and, and, uh, and it's the most appropriate to get your view on how things are shaping up. But let me start with your story going back 40 years when you decided to come to the US to pursue your master's degree uh, and you never left uh, and you decided to start up four ventures on. Uh, what was it that gave you the confidence to say that this is going to be home? So I think uh, coming from India, right, and the opportunities United States provided, mm. it's a great opportunities, uh, you know, you can look at it, what is United States. Yeah. And uh, that started building my base then now I'm expanding to India, you know. Mm. So my confidence is, I think the technology is continuously is going to evolve. Yeah. And if you are on it, I think it, it, you're never going to be loose, you know. Mm. That is my confidence. Mm. You know, so let's talk about how you actually started. And uh, life for you or work for you began at Motorola and you were part of the microprocessing and uh, chip industry going back almost four decades. From there to where we are today, this battle between NVIDIA with the lion's share of the market, AMD trying to sort of get into it uh, as well. How do you see the chip walls today? So the way I look at it, I started with the semiconductor huh. in the 80s. And there is a big semiconductor boom at that time. Yeah. Then afterwards, internet came. Yeah. And afterwards, the social media. Now is AI. So I'm seeing this fourth wave mm. of AI. So what is I see is this is the technology is going to be evolved mm. and there are going to be, you know, people who can take the lead. You know, when in the microprocessors, you know, era, how is Intel took the lead? Yeah. And yeah. now, you know, NVIDIA is taking the lead in AI. And uh, I give a lot of credit, Jensen and, and team. Yeah. You know, innovating a lot of new technologies. Mm. Not only they're spending the money and uh, investing, and then also the kind of the things they are doing to the world, mm. it's the greatest things, you know. Mm. And uh, I think they have edge. And but you know there is no business is, you know, is going to be monopoly. Yeah. Well, over the time, I think people is going to be innovate new things, mm. and there will be a great competition. When you started your first company, your first venture. What was it? What was that spark that made you want to start up in 1988 as a 28-year-old? <laughs> so one is, you know, I came up always in my body a bug, yeah. having owned my own company. You know, so after working for Motorola four or five years, mm. when my boss started, let's Raju start a new company. Yeah, and I already have in my mind I want to do something new. And uh, so sometimes, you know, you don't have so much baggage in your head. Yes. And you want to try. Yeah. So that's what motivated me to try. And I never looked back. Hmm. So when I was a hardcore microprocessor designer. Right. And building uh, very tough microprocessors. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I started my career. Hmm. So that is my fundamentals of, you know, how I build up my career, you know. Yeah. Uh, building the startups. Yeah. So after the you know, first startup, Ross Technology, doing the microprocessors. Then I, I did the company called Servoworks. Mm -hmm. Moved from Austin to Silicon Valley. Yeah. Like everybody thinks Silicon Valley is the, you know, is the intellectual and everywhere, yeah. the kind of technology. I believed in that, so I moved into the Silicon Valley. Mm. I started a company called Servoworks, mm. designing chips around processors, uh -huh. Intel processors. And uh, that's the way we put, you know, Intel processors into the server market. Mm. And uh, we captured good share of the market, right. worldwide market. Right. Then we sold it to the Broadcom. To Broadcom, Broadcom. for $1.8 billion. $1.8 billion plus. And yeah. that was 
huge money back then. Yes, yes, it is huge money. And also, it's not only the huge money. One of the things uh, our, you know, venture is different is there is no venture capitalist right. funded. You, you'd never wanted to take on any VC funding? <laughs> no, never. Because uh, for me, venture capital is more of a money than a strategic partner. Mm -hmm. Always I look for a strategic partner. Right. So we found a strategic partner, Fujitsu, from Japan. Yeah. That is where we started the Sarawaks. And the journey went very well. Hmm. Then after we sold it to uh, Broadcom acquired Sarawaks, yeah. we started Saro Ringens. Yeah. And that is basically a convergence between the network and storage technology. Uh -huh. So that is, uh, again... And exited that as well? Exited that, that with uh, uh, Emulex bought that company yeah and uh, then you know my after doing three startups in US huh. and I have a crazy bug in my head <laughs> I want to do something always in India in India and uh, that is a bug and I'm spending last 15 years huh. and uh, before uh, CIFI I never exposed it to to the Indian market Indian market yeah because I, I never worked yeah. as soon as I graduated from my Bangalore huh. University huh. I moved to US yeah so first experience is CIFI so it's a great learning experience mm. and working in US and working in India is completely different mm. you know if you are running an operation operational company huh. it's a different culture yeah. is different yeah. people are different yeah. And, yeah. Um, and priorities are different mm. so ownerships are different so that's what we are looking at. And uh, last 15 years, we made a great progress mm. in CIFI, mm. uh, changing from uh, consumer-centric company to enterprise-centric yeah. company, yeah. and building one of the biggest enterprise network in the country, yeah. and building one of the best data centers in the country, and building one of the best uh, private cloud platform. Mm. So what is we are positioning CIFI is the you know digital, Mm. infrastructure mm. company of India. Mm. That is my vision. I want to drive to be digital infrastructure. Well, you know, talking about building digital infrastructure in India, you talked about data centers as well. Uh, and, and this is going to require enormous amounts of capital, and that's the kind of commitment that you're willing to make. So take me through the CapEx plans that you have outlined. So we started, you know, from our own cash, mm. funding the data centers. Now, also, we took some investment from Kotak. Right. One of the reasons, you know, you can ask why you took money from Kotak, huh. you never took from any else. Huh. I have a lot of respect, the group of Kotak. Yeah. And uh, especially the way Uday Kotak runs the uh, company. Yeah. And I want to have some validation. Mm. Uh, having that kind of, you know, uh, investment. Right. It's not the money we cannot invest. Yeah. But uh, I think uh, that brings a lot of value into consideration. Mm. Mm. And uh, that's the way we started. And uh, there are money, plenty of money is there available yes and uh, I think it's a question of the thing how much we invest mm. probably we are looking at investing probably five billion dollars by 2030 okay. to building the data centers mm. and the network mm. so five billion over the next five years by 2030 that's the capex plan for you but let's talk about the data center expansion as well as the data center explosion I mean it, it almost seems like there's not going to be enough with the kind of demand explosion that we're seeing I mean, has this surprised you? And, and, no, and I don't. No? No, I'm not surprised because if you're looking at even, forget about before the AI, huh. even the cloud models, I think it requires a lot of the data centers. Hmm. So especially a country like in India, yeah. we are still IT usage is small. Hmm. I know people can buy the IT in, in, in the corporations, but having this cloud, either hyperscalers or a private, public, or mm. hybrid, mm. this gives us a, you know the usage of IT yeah. in India across yeah. the thing yeah. is much better. So I think the potential mm. for IT usage mm. in India is very high mm. because it's a long way to go. Right. And you know having 1.4 billion as the corporations are built to yeah. serve this 1.4. Yeah. Second is now this AI. AI gives the next kick demand. Yeah, yeah. So having AI requires more demand of uh, cloud and uh, mm. and the data centers. That gives also next uh, you know uh, growth of the data centers. Right. So I'm not surprised, mm. and it's going to be continuously is growing. Yeah. You know? So uh, for me, five billion. There is a lot of people is going to spend five billion in yeah, India, yeah. and I'm going to be one of them. One of them. <laughs> one of them. <laughs> but you, know, as someone who has observed what is happening in this industry over the past four decades, one of aspect that 
is probably the biggest headwind at this point in time is the cost. Uh, you believe the cost of inferencing is going to dramatically decline or decline? I mean, and what will drive that? Com more competition obviously will drive prices lower, but what do you believe could be that trigger? I'm a believer of technology we have to offer at the lowest cost. Mm. That is fundament fundamental principle of the technology. See, technology is, when it's, I feel as a technologist, it's more people using. So when I build my chips for server works, mm. my kick is 95% of the worldwide using my chips. Yeah. And where where all was the chip being used? T tell us that. No, when 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 I designed the, when we developed those chips, it went to all the servers. Mm. You know, when internet boom, you know, I, did, I was not predicting. I was doing the chips for the servers, huh. but the internet boom came. Yeah. And we are the one of the biggest player, and all Intel processors, mm. around Intel processors, our chips are used. Yeah. So being, you know, Intel is the very cost-effective solution at that yeah. time. Yeah. You know, Intel and the Microsoft, mm. you know, Windows, for a server market, yeah. we captured that kind of market. Yeah. So similarly, with the AI, you know, the way I look at it is ultimately it has to be, you know, re available for a common man, mm. like the way internet is available mm. today. Mm. It's going to take time. Mm. A country like in India, it may be take a little bit more time mm. because we are more cost effective solutions. Solutions will come. Yeah. You know, today maybe uh, the GPU cost is very high. Yeah. But over the time, innovations will come, mm. and there will be competitions. In I know, I know in Silicon Valley, probably more than a dozen companies yeah. are designing GPUs yeah. with a different aspect. Yeah. And uh, probably half of them or one fourth of them will be successful. Uh. And then we will have much cost effect to GPUs. Yeah. And that's the way the world is changing. Mm. And uh, you know. NVIDIA and Jensen is going to drive the top end, huh. and then people is going to drive the you know, other aspects of the mm. AI. As a AI is not one aspect, you know, mm. it's you know, it's going to be evolved. Yeah. Just we are seeing just, you know, you know, just at the beginning. Mm. And over the time, it's going to be there everywhere. Yeah. Like yeah. the way internet is there everywhere. Everywhere. You, know? you talked about GPUs, and uh, I think this is the possibility that everyone is talking about at this point in time. A made in India GPU. Uh, do you believe that we're ready for it? Do you believe we're on the cusp of seeing that become a reality? Is that a dream that you have? I think the way I look at it, I was thinking, see, India is a consumer of technology, mm. the phase one. The phase two is we are a contributor for the technology. If you look at it, the kind of work our team, people are doing in Bangalore, yeah. Gurgaon, Noeda, all the major, Hyderabad, Chennai, our major you know, six, seven spots, mm -hmm. what are you supporting, GCCs, GDCs. Yeah. That is our contribution, right? So what is next stage? So I think that is done already. Mm. What is the next stage? Creation of technology. Mm. I think it's going to happen. It's going to be happen, and it's a question of the time. Mm. I think that is my dream is coming AI chip out of India. Your dream is to see an AI chip coming out of India. I know that you're also working with the government. You're talking to the government. Uh, you know, we have the AI mission. We have the semiconductor mission. Do you believe that that's enough? What more do you think we need to do? How do we involve the private sector more? Should the government involve the private sector more? What will make the Make in India chip happen? See, my belief is, I don't think we have to depending on the government for everything. Mm. Government does what it does to bring the social, you know, economics. I think industry has to take that kind of a risk and have a passion to build the AI chip. Huh. I think that's, that's what I believe India needs it. Are you going to consider doing it yourself? I may, I may. Yeah? <laughs> I will. I will. And uh, at some point, and uh, as and I think uh, not too far, I think uh, my dream is producing AI chip out of India. And because... Have you started working on that dream? I'm working in my head. The idea in your head to the idea on paper. It's not the money. Mm. It's not the vision. It is the assembling of people, mm. not too many people probably 150 to 200 people mm. with the same passion and uh, 
and have a hungry to develop for India. Huh. Once we assemble such kind of people, I think we can do it. Are you going to find those people here in the valley or do you find them in India? I think hybrid. Hybrid? Yes. I think uh, looking at, you know, experience the last 15 years in India, there's plenty of talent is available, especially my, my, the city I you know, graduated, Bangalore. Yes. A lot of great chip designers. And you know, argumenting with them, the chip designers from Bay Area, mm. I think we can do a kick-ass AI chip. Well, we, we look forward to that and we look forward to you making that announcement as in when you're ready, uh, ready to do that.